Okay, kids, part one and part two are uploading now. Here comes part three. Actually, this is parts two through four. Two through four. My name is Mr. Key. This is the Algebra 2 Regions. In this video, I will be doing parts two through four. This is not going to be a teaching video. This is how fast I can get this out so you can go through the problems and see how you did. I hope you did well. Uh, so far, I would say that the multiple choice were not bad. But let's check to see how the rest of these are going to go. Um, hold on, checking some things out. Okay, so we're going to go to page 8 and see how we did. Jamal has forgotten his password for the school. Now remember these are two point questions so they should not take very long. Uh, he's forgotten his password for the school computer. He knows that it must be four characters long. One, two, three, four. He knows that his password began with one of the 26 letters and ends with a digit. There are nine, there are ten digits, so it ends with a digit. Determine how many four character passwords are possible for Jamal if no letter or digit may be repeated. Well, okay, so far uh, he's used one letter and one digit. Now combined, there's 36 letters and digits. So if we lost one digit and one letter, that means there's 34 left for this spot and 33 left for this spot. So all I got to do is multiply those 26 times 30. 4 times 33 times 10. And I get 291,720. 291,720. He's going to be there for a while. Let's go to question 9. Told, again, I'm going quick. Let's see how you did. Emma's deposits. Emma's deposits. Uh, deposited 5000 in the bank. She's using this formula where A is the number of P's. 5%. Don't forget, that's the tricky part. Let's do this. A is equal to, we want the amount after four years, and time is in years. So this is going to be an easy one. 5000 There's only one tricky part of this one. E, the rate is 0 0.05 times 4. you got to be absolutely kidding me. That is a joke of a question. 5,000 times E, 0 0.04 times, oops, excuse me, 0 0.05. See, that's where you'd probably make a mistake, times 5 times 4. See, if, the only mistake you're going to make is if you listen to me and you put the wrong numbers in. Equals $6,107. So A equals $6,107 and 1 cent. So rounded to the nearest dollar, there's where you're going to learn your last point. A equals 6107. That's it. It's the only acceptable answer there. Let's see how you did. By the way, I'll keep looking over here because once the next video becomes available, I am going to um, work on it. So that's why I keep looking over here. Um, so hopefully I'll get it up for you soon. All right, 30. The common difference in an arithmetic sequence, n, find the common difference. So they're telling us the first term, and they're telling us the ninth term. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. I'm going to choose to do it this way. Here's the formula. a n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Now, d is the thing I'm looking for, but they gave us a sub 1. So that's 16 plus, and then we know a sub 9, a sub 9, a sub 9, I don't know what I just wrote there. That's like, that's like gold or something there. a sub 9 is equal to 36. So 36, but 9 is n. 9 is n. So I'm going to say, okay, 9 minus 1 times d. So this is the equation I need to solve. So 36 is equal to 16 plus 8D. Subtract 16, and I get 20 is equal to 8D. Divide by 8, 
divide by 8, and I get D equals 20 over 8, which is equal to, let's see, 4 goes in there, 5 halves. So the answer is 5 halves. Now, there's another way to do it, which would have probably been more difficult, and that would have been to say, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and put 16 here and 36 here. And you could have figured out, okay, there's a difference of 20, and i got to add once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times. So divided by eight, and you got five halves. So either one, there's your common difference. All right, I'll be back. Okay, I just uploaded uh, problems 15 through 27. Let's see how quickly I can get through these so I know you guys are waiting for them. Oh, my God, I love trig equations. How do you like trig equations? All right, so let's see what we got. Again, got to come back over here, check my answer key out. All right, so I'll uh, solve this equation. So let's see what we got here. I hate having negatives. I'm going to move this over, subtract cosine theta, subtract cosine theta. So what I end up with is 2 cosine theta minus 1 equals 0. I'll bring the 1 over. I get 2 cosine theta equals 1. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. So I end up with cosine theta equals 1 half. Now you have to remember where cosine is positive. All students take calculus. Cosine is positive here. So I need two angles, one in the first quadrant and one in the fourth quadrant where cosine equals a half. Now, if you don't remember that, mm, sorry, the angle is 60 degrees. So I need to go 60 degrees this way and 60 degrees this way. Does it tell me to go in between and it wants to go in degrees? So my answer is 60 degrees and 300 degrees. You need both answers. Hopefully you got that one right. Moving on, children. Again, we're going quickly through this. This is not a teaching video. This is a how quick can I get through it so you can find out how you did video because it's the last one. Hit the subscribe button right now, kids. Otherwise, you're just going to tick me off. Man, I'm going to stop videoing right now. Man, you don't want that, Derry. I'm just wasting time while I get my spreadsheet up. All right, so what do we got here? We got hours and bacteria. So I'll go hours and bacteria. And hours goes one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Most common mistake, putting the numbers in wrong. Don't do that. 1990. 2200, 2430, 2685, 2965, boom, chakalaka. Now, I haven't even read this yet. Let's see what they asked for. Assuming this is exponential trend continues, is it reasonable to expect at least 3,500 bacteria at hour seven? So it's exponential. They're telling you right there it is an exponential equation. So we need to do exponential regression. Menu, statistics, stat calculations, exponential regression. My independent variable is hours. My dependent variable is the bacteria. I click OK. Didn't say where to round to. In fact, rounding has nothing to do with this problem, so you may not round. You should not have left a rounded answer, although since this is only a part two question, uh, my guess is they're not going to take off for rounding. They want you to create this equation, y equals a times b to the x. You need to tell them what a is, and you need to tell them what b is. So a is 1801.0. Point. Now you should have not have, you should not have rounded eight one seven two eight two eight one seven two eight two. Although if you put a bunch of decimals, as long as you put three decimals, four decimals, you're probably okay. I don't have the official answer key, so I don't know exactly what they took. But since this is only a two point question, my guess as long as you came up with an equation that was reasonable. So 1801.817, probably good enough. Parenthesis 1.105, probably good enough to the x. Now I just rounded this to the hundreds. Didn't say where to round to, right? 
So now what I need to do is put in a seven in my calculator. So I need to type that in. So I need to go to my calculator. 1801.817 parenthesis 1.105 parenthesis raised to the seventh. Now it's not good enough to just to do it. You need to show that you're going to do it. So you need to go 1801. 0 0.817, 1.105 to the 7, and you end up with y equals 3624, 3624.487. Now, that is your justification. It is not your answer. The answer is yes, it is reasonable to expect uh, th at least 3,500 bacteria since accord, I'm not going to write all this out. Something like according to our model at this, we'll have, you know, at seven hours we'll have over 3,500 bacteria. As long as you got this equation here and this number and said yes and gave some kind of answer, you're going to get two points. Okay, moving on. That's a lot for two points on that one. But then we got this one, which is not a lot. Oh, my God, fractions. Fractions suck. How are you going to do this one, kids? How are you going to do this? I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know. Oh, wait, hold on. This is just this. A over B minus B over A divided by B over A minus A over B. Now, some idiot probably put negative 1. I'm going to punch in the head. Common denominator is AB. So I'm going to put an AB next to every one of these. AB, AB, AB. There's other ways to do this problem. I'm going to arrive at some answer. If you arrived at the same answer, mathematically correct, you'll be okay. All right, so in this first one, the Bs are going to cancel. I'm left with A squared minus. The As are going to cancel. I'm left with B squared all over. The As are going to cancel. I'm left with B squared. The B's are going to cancel. I'm left with A squared. Well, those are exactly the same thing, but they're backwards. So this is the negative 1 rule in its finest. Now, if you don't like that, you can just do this. A minus B times A plus B all over B minus A, B plus A. These cancel. And the answer is, not this, it's equal to negative 1. Now, if you got this here, you got 1 point out of 2. The answer is negative 1. This is that classic, I've told you a million times, negative 1 rule. And hopefully your teacher did as well. Guys, I need this coffee. It's 1030. I'm tired. I hope you appreciate me doing this for you. Because I actually should be in bed because I'm an old man. So let's see what we got here. Determine the exact value. Exact value means don't use your calculator. It's probably not going to work. The exact value of cosecant of P if it's an angle in standard position and its term side passes through the point 5, negative 8. Bam, bam. 5, negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Bam, right there. So, we're just going to draw a right triangle. Now, I know this is 5. I know this is 8. So, I want to find out what this is. X. Do I need that? I do need that. So, so 5 squared plus 8 squared equals X squared. That's 64 plus 25. What is that, 89? 89. 89 is equal to x squared. That means x is equal to the square root of 89. Now, cosecant of p 
is the reciprocal of the sine of P. Well, I know that the sine of P, sine, is opposite over hypotenuse. So the sine of P is 8 over the square root of 89. But the cosecant of P, and your actual answer to this question, the cosecant of P is the square root of 89 over 8. And that's the exact answer. But wait a second. Let's add a little bit more difficult problem to it. Because we are in the second, excuse me, in the fourth quadrant, you have to remember that not only is sine negative, cosecant is negative. So your actual answer is, if you really want to get this one right, is negative square root of 89 over 8. Doesn't matter where you put the negative, as long as you have negative square root of 89 over 8. So if you forgot the negative, one point out of two. Lots of ways to get one point on that one. Very difficult to get two. All right, kids, I love these questions. They are so freaking easy. So we're going to change eight. We're going to make it two cubed x plus three. We're going to change the 32. We're going to make it two to the fifth x squared minus one. All right, so now I just got to set the exponents equal to each other, and I'm all set. So I'm going to distribute, and I get 3x plus 9 equals 5x squared minus 5. Now I got to bring everything to the right, so 0 is equal to 5x squared minus 3x minus 14. Now, did it say round it all? It just said solve. Solve for x. Well, I'm going to guess these factor. This is probably factorable. Since it's only a four-point question, it's probably factorable. I could do menu 331, but I'm not going to. Let's see. 7 and 2 minus and plus. That's negative 10. That's positive 7. That's negative 3. So my answers are x equals negative 7 over 5 and x equals 2. I missed a question, I know, I'll go back to it. Negative 7 over 5 and 2. There you go. All right, let me go back. I apologize. Totally forgot about this one. You're probably like, no, 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 you missed the problem. There it is, problem 35. Sorry about it. Determine the number of degrees in 8 pi over 9 radians. All right, that's a simple question. 8 pi over 9. The conversion is to get rid of pi, so we need to do 180 over pi. Well, once I do that, the pi's cancel. How many times does 9 go into 180? Oh, 20 times. So my answer is 160 degrees. Can't get, now, how do you go from this question, which is what, to this question, which is yay? So there you go. I hope you got two points on this one, and I hope you got some partial credit on that last one. All right, I'll be right back. All right, kids, I think we're down to three questions. Three questions, yay. What is this? Oh, no problem at all. Let's get rid of that parentheses. So we get 4x squared minus 5x greater than or equal to 30 minus 24x. Now, this is a quadratic, so we're going to bring everything to one side. You want to make sure your x squared is positive. So my plus 19x. Um, minus 30 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, this one you could use menu 331 on. I'm not going to, but this one's not that easy. Uh, let's go with... Let's go with 4x and x. That's what I'm guessing. I'm not sure. By the way, for those of you who don't remember, it's just menu 331. You type them in. Enter, what is it, 4, 24, and negative 30. So 4, 24, negative 30, enter, enter. And there, oh, are you kidding me? Oh, plus 19, shoot, sorry. Should have been 19, forgot it was 19. 24 is what I brought over. So there's my answers, negative 6 and 5 fourths. So I know it's got to be, let's see, uh, 
plus 6 and minus 5. Let's see, that's positive 24, minus 5 is 19. So I get my two answers, x equals 5 over 4 and x equals 6, negative 6. Well, I'm not done. This is a four-point question, kids. you got to remember that greater than 0 means positive. All right, so we got to go check our numbers. We've got to go on our number line. Here's negative 6. Uh, and here's 5 over 4, and 0 somewhere around here. All right, so doesn't really matter. So this breaks it into our compartments that we need to check. So if I plug in 0 into this equation right here, if I plug in 0, I get 0, 0, negative 30. So 0 would be negative. I plugged in negative, so somewhere in here would be negative. If I plugged in a number that's less than negative 6, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you plug a number that's less than negative 6, like negative 10 in there, this will end up being positive. If you plug a number bigger than 5 fourths, like 10 in there, this will end up being positive. And what are we looking for? We are looking for where it is greater than 0 or where it's positive. And it's got an equal to. So I'm looking here, going this direction, and here's going, now did this say solve and graph or just solve? Determine the solution. So the solution is there, but we got to state it. So I can state it like this. X is less than or equal to negative 6, or X is greater than or equal to 5 fourths. That's one way to state it. Or you could have done it this way. Negative infinity to negative 6. Oops, bracket. Bracket union 5 over 4 comma positive infinity. Two left, kids. Two left. Let's move it. All right, I'm going to do this one, then take a little break. Not, you'll, not that you'll notice. So let's see what we got here. The table below shows the number of hurricanes in the North Atlantic from 1990 to 2000. Determine the interquartile range of this data. Determine the population variance for this data. All right, we've got to just put it in our calculator. So let's bust out the old calculator. That's not what I want. Home. Uh, let's get rid of this. Don't save. No. Back into it. What are these things? Hurricanes. Let's call them hers. And we're going to go 8444. 8444. 311, 311, 9, 3, 10, 8, 8, 9, 4. Boom. Got 13 hurricanes. Over here, we're going to do, now it's only one variable, so we're going to go menu, statistics, stat calculations, one variable statistics. Yes, we're doing it on her, the hurricanes, and click OK. So the question says is, the only question says is, State the interquartile range. Remember, that's Q3 minus Q1. So the interquartile range, you've got to show some work. So part A, Q3 minus Q1. And that's easy. Just come down here. Uh, 9 minus 4. 9 minus 4. So the interquartile range is 5. Part B. So determine the population variance for this data. Oh, variance. Ooh, we haven't talked about variance in a while. So if you go over to your calculator, remember that R R is your population standard deviation and variance is who's bugging me? Variance is the population deviation squared. So we got to say R is equal to 2.7909, We come over to our calculator and we're going to say 2.7. 0516482 squared. And that's why that was a tricky question. 7.3 is the answer. Hmm. Did I do something wrong? In my in my haste, I seem to have gotten 7.8. 
Round to the nearest hundred. Let me make sure I got these numbers in here right. Oh, come on. Calculator, boom. 7905. Is that what I typed in my calculator? 7905. Oh, I didn't type the wrong thing in. Doggone it. 2.7905 squared. This will give me the right answer. It's 7.8. So the answer is 7.8. I apologize. Sorry about that. 7.8. You should have showed work that said 2.7905168 squared. Because variance is equal to the population standard deviation squared. You need to show a little bit of work there. Not, not a lot. Okay, last... All right, for us math teachers, it's always a big question. What will that last problem be? So this looks like it's a triangle question. The Bermuda Triangle, obviously a triangle question, on a map of a section of the Atlantic Ocean is bordered by line segments stretching from Miami to Bermuda to Puerto Rico. So really what they're doing is telling you you have a triangle that says Miami to Bermuda to Puerto Rico. So we'll do A. Well, I don't have A. How about M? Miami to Bermuda. Bermuda to Puerto Rico and back to Miami. The distance from Miami to Bermuda, Bermuda is 1,042. The distance from Bermuda to Port, man, I can't speak that. It's too past my bedtime, is 2,057. And the distance from Puerto Rico to Miami is 1,127. As soon as you see side, 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 you know that you have the law of cosines. And you need to find an angle, and this is the hard case of the law of cosines, which is why it's your six-point question. Find the area contained within the Bermuda Triangle to narrow square meter. Well, area, the only area formula you've ever used in trig was A times B times the sine of C, where these are the two sides, and this is the angle in between. So here's what I'm going to do. I don't know which angle you found. I'm going to find this angle right here. And then I'm going to use these two sides to find the area. So I'm going to say b squared, which is 1127 squared, is equal to, now the formula is, in this case, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine a. Well, these two things are what I'm going to be using B for. So over here is going to be the cosine of B. And then I'm just going to use these two sides as the other two sides. That's what these two sides are going to be. Again, this is not a teaching video. It's showing you how to do the problem. So 1,042 squared my plus 2,057 squared minus 2 times 1,042 times, sorry, 2 times 1,042 times 2,057 times the cosine of B. So big numbers, big deal. All right, we've got a lot to do. 1127 squared, 1127 squared. Lots of places to make mistakes here, kids. Holy crap, that's what I made last year. Not 127, oh, whoa. 1,270,000, 129. 0129 is equal to, now I'm going to take these two things and add them up and put them together. So 1042 squared plus, was it 2057? 2057 squared, and I get 5317, 5317. 013 minus, and then I'm going to do 2 times 1042 times 2057, and that's equal to 40, 428, 428. Lots of places to make mistakes because the numbers are so big. 6788, 6788 cosine B. 
All right. So now I got to move this over. So I'm going to subtract 5,317,013 minus 5,317,013. So I'm going to take this number, enter, and I'm going to subtract this number, and I get negative 4 million, negative 4 million, 04688, Four is equal to negative four million two hundred and eight six seven eight eight times the cosine of b. We've got to divide by negative four two eight six seven eight eight. Negative four two eight six seven eight eight. Like I said, lots of places to make mistakes. That's why, even though I'm writing these, I know I'll never write that. I'll say that one because if I re tried to retype that in, I'd probably make a mistake. Divided by this one, enter, uh, let's get that as a decimal, nah, whatever, uh, it should be positive, because it's a negative divided by negative, one of them I didn't put as a negative, so it should be 59, 53, 513, 59, 513, again, it's positive, because there's two negatives there, over 63041, 63041 is equal to the cosine of b. Now, finally, I can figure out what b is. So I'm going to do inverse cosine. Uh, let's multiply. i got to get rid of that negative, so let's just do this. i got to get rid of that negative, so bleach. So I'm going to do inverse cosine, trig, inverse cosine of this answer. I don't know what's going on. I got all crap all over the place. Delete. You wouldn't do it this way. You'd do it a lot more methodically. I'm just, it's, it, what I'm doing is right. It's just a little weird. Okay, so I'm going to take the inverse cosine of that, and that's my angle. 19.259. B equals 19.25. Now, you can't round it. 9131. 913. 902. So now I'm going to use that side that I found that that was 19.2 degrees or whatever it is, 19.2 degrees. But I got to use that with these two sides in my area of a triangle form. So I'm going to come down here. Final answer then, my area is equal to A, which is oh, one half. Did I put a one half in that thing? Oh my gosh, I forgot the one half. One half AB sine C. It's on the formula sheet. You should have known that. One half times, let me see my two sides, 2057 times 1042 times the sine of that thing, 19.25913. And I hope you did not round early. So I gotta put this in my calculator. So 0. 0.5 times 2057 times 1042 times the sine of, and I'm not even gonna retype it, that thing. Enter. Woo! 353489. 353489. 0 0.855, 0 0.855, 538, 538. Now we got to figure out, of course, I'm sure they're going to ask us some strange place to round this thing. Round it to the nearest square mile. Well, that means we're going to say, do we change this one? Well, this is higher than 9 or higher than 5, so that's going to round this up. So my final answer is, and the only acceptable answer is, Three five three four nine zero. That is your final answer for this test. I hope you guys did well. If you did a hundred and, and you use my videos, please let me know. If you passed, I'd love a quick comment that says I was able to help you out. Makes me feel better. Uh, I hope you rocked it. I hope this video helped ease, ease your mind. Or oh gosh, I'm, I hope you did well. All right, kids, catch you on the flip side. Goodbye.